I hate Christmas. I'm gonna be honest with you. <laughs> you know, I think the people that love Christmas are the people that grew up with money and parents. But anyways, Merry effing Christmas, everybody. Good morning, everybody. I'm Ryan Cruzy, Cruzy Originals. We've been sponsored by a coffee company, Gripco Coffee. Oh, it smells so good. They sent us a bag of beans. I don't have a goddamn bean grinder. I got a Keurig. So, uh, thanks. We'll see how this goes. Ooh, man, that smells good, though. But anyways, on that note, probably got to get a bean grinder and figure out how to do that kind of stuff. Or maybe I'll just jam some beans in the Keurig and see how it works out. Poke a little bean Keurig. I don't know, man. <laughs> I'm giving up. But we're back at it, and today I'm going to be doing a how-to. Ah, I know. I've been doing some how-to videos lately. You're welcome. I hate it. But here we go. I'm going to change the bearings out in the race bike. So this thing did a season of racing. The front bearing is a little crunchy. She needs to be replaced, so I'm gonna do a little how-to, change the bearings on a Harley-Davidson. I have a Jim's bearing pulling tool. I'll show you how to set all that stuff up. And where you can get one or a generic version, which is on Amazon. Uh, the generic one works good if you're just like doing this yourself in your garage, but if you're gonna do it professionally and use it regularly, it's not gonna, it's not gonna last. But for you guys at home, Amazon, Harley-Davidson bearing install and replacement tool is pretty dialed. I have a Jim's one because I started out with the Amazon one in my life and it lasted not very long. But I'm gonna pull the bearings out. Uh, on a front wheel, you can get away with leaving the brake rotors on. On a rear wheel, you probably need to pull the sprocket and some things because you need to be able to get to this very conveniently. I'm gonna start out with uh, drinking some coffee. Oh, it's cold. It's freezing in here. It's only 60 degrees in the shop and it's like, I don't know how cold it is outside, but it's goddamn cold. We, it's cold. Everything's frozen in the morning and we're hot people out here, you know, we like hot weather and it's like 30. Bullshit, I moved here to get away from that. Well, anyways, these are 25 millimeter bearings. This is a late model bike, 2008 and up is 25 millimeter. You can tell by how thick the bearing is front to back. A 25 mil is very thin depth wise you can see it's a thin bearing the one inch bearing is twice as thick and a three-quarter bearing has a lot smaller hole it's pretty obvious when you buy the gym's kit it has all this stuff in there it has like a 25 millimeter let me see what this guy is just make sure i'm not doing this wrong god damn it i can't read that jake can you read that 25 mil there we go see as you can see it's 25 millimeters anyways this guy little protruder she pokes down in there see this lip right there you want to penetrate this guy into the lip until it sits in between there's a crush tube in the center that floats around that sets the bearings so this thing should pop right in between those the crush tube and the bearing pull up on it she's locked into place this guy right here is the spreader in fact I got to grab some tools all right this is a uh, I don't know, I just call it the biggest Allen in my set. I should know this by now. 3 8 Allen. She's gonna go in from the backside, up through this guy. Just like that, we'll just leave that guy sitting there like that, like a little prod. And this would be the castle something or another. She goes over the top, sits down like that. Then you got a big ass washer. Goes over the top. You want to have a little anises on these threads. Mine are already loaded up pretty good, but put something on there to keep them from getting cooked. Also, I've come to find out that my nut only goes on one way too, and then it binds up the other direction. These things will get a little challenging because it has these flats right here to put a wrench on. And it, the problem with the Amazon one is it's soft material, so when you tighten it, you'll beat these threads up, and then it just becomes really hard to get the nut off and on. It gets real hard to get a nut from time to time. So now you've got this guy on here. This isn't tight. It's just snug down. That's it. You don't want to pull this up at all. So then there's another little washer and another little nut. This one spreads out 
that tool that we shoved down into the bearing and locks it into place. So now we're gonna go back to this guy. Get. This, I think she's 11 sixteenths, it is. I'm just gonna give this just a little snug. It doesn't gotta be cranked down, just, that's good. Just snug. Oh yeah, so now she's down there. Do I got the right tools? Let's see. Yep, 5 eighths. Croissant, a croissant wrench, or an adjustable wrench. Crescent is actually a brand. Everything just got kind of called that, but and we're gonna tighten this bad boy. We're tightening the big nut, so whichever one turns. Oh man, that thing's tight. Come on, baby. Yeah. You're gonna get a bit of a workout, that's for sure. It's best if you heat up the hub with some heat, but then when you do that, you're also gonna break the Loctite loose in your sprout in your rotor. So if you're gonna heat it, you need to pull the bolts out and re-Loctite and re-torque your ro uh, rotor, but I don't wanna do that, so I'm just pulling the shit out. It's so cold in here. Absolutely hate the cold. I'll take it back apart all the way. Now this one's out, it kind of feels good, but it's not good. If you got any kind of catch or anything, if it doesn't feel perfect, it's not a good bearing. Anytime you change the tires or anything on your bike, you should always check the bearings. So I have this little tool that I made. This is for setting, this is the crush tube. See this guy? This sets your bearing in play. I like to have mine set up to that line right there. That means I know that my bearing's gonna set right in. I'm gonna have the right in place. That thing's pretty dialed. Just gotta test it to make sure I have different different versions. You don't need this, this is just for me. But I'm gonna pull both bearings out and I'm gonna set this whole thing up, titties, and then show you start to finish. Rick. All right, same thing on this side. Since we don't have a crush tube in, we're gonna cheat just a little bit. Gonna take this guy, leave that in there. Going from the back side. Man, did you look at that? A little bit quicker, not much, but a little bit. Slap that guy on there. Big washer, big nut. And that bag of coffee smells so good sitting over there. I, we ordered a coffee grinder, but who knows when it'll be here because of goddamn Christmas. Lightly snug. Put a little anti seize on the side wall just so it uh, doesn't take any material when you press the bearing, helps her slide in there nice and neat. We're going to start with the right side, which valve stem should always stick out the right side. Make sure my tires are dialed, they are so right side first. I have the installers, find the 25 mil that's a one incher, 25 millimeter. These slide into the bearing. And then there's this big rod that goes through here. And this thing cups up on the on the other side, and then you put a bolt on it and you squeeze the bearing in. I don't use that shit, it sucks. Clearly it sucks. It tends to like pull crooked and stuff like that. I don't really like it. I'd like to uh that's probably how you should do it until you figure out what works best for you, but I just like to put it in by hand because I can feel the bearing and make sure that everything is going in nice and straight this way. You can feel the bearing with the hammer. You 
should be able to feel this thing if it's going smooth and you can feel it kind of bind and then you need to hit it in different places and it'll loosen it'll keep it nice smooth even draw that just comes with experience and doing it a lot so right side bearing she's pressed in all the way she's fully buried Ugh. now we'll go to the other side crush tube i'm going to check my spacing out a little bit so in a sealed bearing you shouldn't really have any in play it's like thousands you know but it can't be too tight so if it's too tight when you press your bearings in when you set the bearings up too tight that crush tube will push your inner race inner race outer race crush tubes too tight it's going to push this out and this in so it's going to cone out the bearing and you're going to smoke your bearings if it's too loose and you have too much in play in the inside it's going to push the race in when you torque the axle therefore smoking the bearings so this needs to be perfect when you put it in it should be just touching i mean just touching so it doesn't really move around but it's not tight it's it's a feel thing you know and then you need to check it and all that good shit. so we're going to start with this side and we're going to do this a little bit at a time this is also one of the main reasons why i don't like to use the screw it together thing because it takes goddamn forever you got to take it off and on screw it in and out 10 miles at a time this guy's nice and fast. So this sticking through right here will also catch your crush tube and line it up. When you start getting close, you got to go slow and you got to check that tube and you got to go slow because this is the one that sets the spacing. That's why you bury the other side and then you set the left side. ways to go but I'm basically just letting the hammer drop too I'm not I'm not beating on the thing I'm just letting the weight of the hammer I'm on fingertips right here you need to be real meticulous about this shit when you're setting up wheel bearings right, let's give her a feel I can move it up and down but I can't move it side to side at all. So we're just titties. Hell yeah. Bearings feel good. Check those a bunch of times. And we'll throw in a motorcycle. Pick me up a breakfast burrito from Scramble. I don't want to use Uber Eats. That suckers charged me $18 to deliver a burrito last time. Came to $37 for a breakfast burrito. The hell with you, Uber Eats. If you're ever going to push the pucks and spread your brakes open, you got to pull the cap off the reservoir or it will create like a cavitation. It's like vapor lock the brakes. That shit needs somewhere to go. And if you don't give it somewhere to go, it can create a problem down the road. So. and check the spacing. I'm kind of re-spacing everything real quick like. Dial. A good way to tell on these Brembo's, they're a two-piece brake caliper, so they have a seam right down the center. So if you can put this on center of that seam, they're pretty well dialed. Also check both sides, make sure that the rotor is clearing the caliper, nothing's gonna rub, nothing's close, and it's even side to side. Very important stuff you should know, and very important stuff, I guarantee you a lot of the old custom bike builders out there don't do that shit. A lot of muffs out there buying their way into the bike industry. 35 foot-pounds, boom. I didn't know this was back from powder coat. I feel like I just dropped it off from powder coat. Figure that out down the road. This is a license plate bracket I made. It's going to go off of the uh, pivot shaft. Look all fancy. I'm going to get ready to put this thing on. I'm going to eat some breakfast and then I'm going to put this thing on. 
the license plate bracket that I made in the last video with this guy is back from powder coat. I didn't even know, I thought I just dropped off a couple days ago, but they got that shit done fast. So I'm gonna put it on today and set up the tail light probably, wire it all up. But she's pretty slick. This guy's gonna go here. I got a little keeper bolt right here to keep it in place for torquing. My brake switch is going to go in here like this. And then I'm going to run two AN fittings out of here, which the brake lines will hook to. I'm going to take this P clamp off and bolt this. And then this will bolt up to here with a spacer so it can swivel a bit. And then we'll have a brake line come straight up to here, straight up to here. And then when you hit this and it builds pressure, it'll fire the brake light. I did not think that son of a bitch was gonna turn on. That battery's been sitting a long time. Well, I'll be dipped in shit. That's a good sign. All right, I need a test light and see what I can come up with here. Really all I need is a fucking constant power that I can run to the light itself. I need a constant power that I can run to the brake switch and then that'll be broken to the light also, the secondary, so. If I got two hots coming out of here and the ground, I can wire right off of this switch, which this is a running light blinker switch, but I don't need it to be a broken because I'm gonna break it with the switch down here. Which technically you're not supposed to do any of this on an M8 because they say if you solder any wires, you do anything and nothing works, which is mostly bullshit, but. That is an aggressive fuel pump. Let's go power. Power, yes, let's go power. Nope power at the blinker switch then. I'm gonna have to run both of them off of this. Oh, it's pain in the f ass. <coughs> I got the mule. God damn. God damn. That's what I said. God <laughs> damn it. No, it's on fucking low too. <laughs> Come around the fucking corner just. It is. It's insane, bro. Line. Got yeah. the mule. That thing's bright. If you have a heavy clutch or a heavy clutch handle, Mueller mm. easy pull. This is a different ball and ramp. The ball and ramp angle is different. This will take 40% of that out. Then made it up with like an Elite Mototech lever up here and you can put a 30 over clutch spring in and one finger that thing. Zip, zip, zip. That's what I got my stunt bike. I'm gonna put this one in the twin cam soft tail build that we're doing because that clutch is brutal. And I hate pulling on a heavy clutch. This thing is the shit. If you can't find it on our website, call the shop, talk to Trent, we can get them out to you real fast. It is the best thing you'll ever buy for your shit. It's the only easy pull that works too, don't use any other ones. They're all bullshit with the linkages and everything. You want to have a complete ball and ramp system. Oh, ground's no good. Good. I love working on Harley so much. Alright, well that's me. Is anything light? Just the license plate light. Motherfucker. Well, that's cool. Goddamn fucking light don't work. <sighs> well, I guess I need to order a new light.
on like this. Bullshit. God. I'm going to have to order a new light. And that's that. I'm going to stop for the day because I can't do shit. I need a Bung King tail light. This piece of shit doesn't work. Oh, those new gloves? They're fucking nice. Yeah? Look like mechanics gloves. I got a pair for you over there. Yeah? Torque Moto? Torque Moto. Torque we'll have Moto. a review, maybe, if you want to do one of their shit. Well, we're going to review their miniature saddlebags, their ABS lined uh, gloves, and what else? <coughs> uh, bar bag. Bar bag. Bar bag. Saddlebags I'm stoked about because I'm going to try and fit them up on my monkey. And we'll probably put them on Trent's bike first and try it out. And all that good shit and then get another set and we're going to be a dealer for them and it's all going to be on the website as long as I like this stuff. I haven't actually had my hands on it right now and when I review things it's... I tell them straight up, be prepared because I'm going to be fucking brutal. I only want to sell the best. Nothing but the best. And on that note, uh, I'm going to clean up my shit and step away from this son of a bitch because uh, I can't really get anywhere because the taillight doesn't work and I need the taillight to work so I can test everything and finish wiring it up. And I got brake lines on the way and brake fittings and all that stuff that I need. So it's mounted. It looks nice. This taillight's pretty faded anyway, so I really didn't need a new one. This is off of uh, Gino Leonati's bike, Lino Giannotti on Instagram. Bust Knuckle Stunt Tour, this was his old one, which is probably why it's off of his bike, because it doesn't work. Mystery solved. <laughs> but this thing is coming along. The front end is done. That's all completely rebuilt. New bearings, new brakes, new seals, new fluid, new everything. Uh, this will be done as soon as I get the parts. I probably got like an hour's worth of stuff left to do. We'll get that all done and then we'll do some nice not going to do riding videos because I need to get pump gas in it and I need to get it tuned, which we're going to probably take it to Trash Performance and have those guys tune it uh, back on pump gas. And we'll try and make something happen video wise with that. Maybe we will see what they have to say and uh, I'm going to go from there. Woo, and on that note, Brian Ryan Cruzy, Cruzy Reynolds, CruzyReynolds.com. Go check it out, like, subscribe, ring that bell, hit up our Patreon, follow up our podcast, and chances to win a bunch of stuff. We give stuff away all the time in there, all the time. Peace.